Hey there, duelists, it's Low Tier Hero here coming at you from Draw Phase. Today, we're diving deep into the blazing fire of the Salomon Great strategy, a fierce meta contender. Why are we covering this deck? You're probably wondering. Well, it's because Master Duel has introduced a brand new Link 3 monster and has removed a limited ban on a specific monster that has really changed the game. For the Link monster, we're talking about this princess here who is an inherent support to fire decks. It special summons a monster that is a fire type from the graveyard to the field. And if it's in the graveyard, you can target a fire type monster on your field and pop a monster on your opponent's field to special summon it itself from the graveyard as well. So very, very good support to fire decks. The second card on this list that has re-energized the Salomon Great strategy potentially is Blaster coming to three. Blaster coming to three might be a minuscule positive impact that would nuance the strategy for Salomon Great, but it's definitely something that you do want to consider just in case you start seeing Dragon Ruler cards in the mix on Master Duel. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get you equipped with the knowledge to put out their flames. So let's jump right into this counter guide. The Salomon Great archetype compromised of Fire Cybers monsters centers around Link Summoning and a unique reincarnation mechanic, the Reincarnation Link Summon, facilitated by Salomon Great Sanctuary. This playstyle, built on reusing and re-energizing its own monsters, ensures consistent board setups and efficient resource management. The deck excels at establishing a board with layered interruptions and then maintaining that board through recycling and retrieval effects. Notable and key cards for the Salomon Great strategy are of course Gazelle, a central piece to the deck's engine. Gazelle facilitates board setups by sending crucial Salomon Great cards to the graveyard when summoned. Spinny, another primary combo starter, Spinny summoning from the graveyard capability works seamlessly with Gazelle to build the board. Sunlight Wolf, an integral link monster, Sunlight Wolf enables recycling of fire monsters and, upon reincarnation, retrieves used Salomon Great spells and traps. Bale Lynx acts as the gateway to the deck's reincarnation mechanic by fetching Salomon Great Sanctuary and offers protection from destruction with its graveyard effect. Salomon Great Sanctuary, the keystone of the deck, enabling reincarnation link summoning, which unlocks additional effects and potential for the Salomon Great link monsters. And finally, the last key card is Roar and Rage. These trap cards offer versatile interruption, either through negation with Roar or targeted removal with Rage. The win condition for the Salomon Great strategy is, of course, link summoning. Using Salomon Great Sanctuary, the deck can repeatedly and efficiently link summon, offering enhanced effects and board dominance. Resource looping, Sunlight Wolf, Gazelle, and other cards create a cycle that ensures a steady flow of resources, making it challenging for the opponent to break the established board. Board control, establishing a board with multiple layers of protection, including negations from Salomon Great Roar and Bailing's protective effect, and OTK potential, with the inclusion of powerhouses like Axis Code Talker and Cyber Jammer. The deck can shift from a control-oriented stance to an aggressive one, clearing the opponent's board and pushing for game-ending damage. Of course, with every deck, there are also weaknesses and choke points. For the Salomon Great weakness and choke point, early disruption interrupting key starters like Gazelle or Spinny can hinder the deck's initial setup. Realizing that Salomon Great has a high dependency on the graveyard, the deck's reliance on graveyard setup and recycling makes it vulnerable to cards that can banish or outright disrupt graveyard plays. And Salomon Great relies heavily on its link summoning mechanic. Without access to Salomon Great Sanctuary, the deck loses its primary method of upgrading its link monsters, which can significantly reduce its efficiency and power. When playing against the Salomon Great strategy, or in general, knowing when to use your hand traps is essential to maximize their impact and disrupt your opponent's plays. The hand traps that we will be covering will be Ash Blossom, Maxi, and Infinite Impermanence, as those are the Holy Trinity and the most used hand traps in the game on Master Duel. 
We'll begin with Ash Blossom in Joyous Spring. Ash is used to negate effects that involve adding a card from the deck to the hand, sending a card from the deck to the graveyard, or special summoning a monster from the deck. Against Salomon Great, your first initial target will be Gazelle. If your opponent activates the effect of Gazelle to send a Salomon Great card from the deck to the graveyard, this is a prime opportunity to use Ash. Gazelle is a combo starter, and disrupting this effect can hinder their setup. Your second option for Ash would be Salomon Great Circle. When your opponent activates Circle to add a Salomon Great monster from their deck to their hand, Ash, using Ash can slow down their play. The same thing would be for Signet Mining. And the third option for Ash would be Salomon Great Bailings. If Bailings effect is activated to add Salomon Great Sanctuary from the deck to the hand, consider using Ash if you believe they don't have another copy or a way to access it. Maxi. Maxi allows you to draw a card every time your opponent special summons a monster. It's the best card arguably and the most crucial and controversial hand trap. And against combo heavy decks like Salem and Great, it can be devastating. Here's when to use it. Generally speaking, the initial special summon, you want to drop Maxi as soon as your opponent begins their special summon sequences. There's really not a potential trigger on when to drop it. You just drop it automatically and hope they don't have a cross out or a called by the grave or an ash. For Salomon Greats, in a more specific perspective, a good time would be right after they special summon Gazelle in response to a Salomon Great going to the graveyard or when they try to bring back Spinny from the graveyard. And of course, utilizing Maxi before link climbing, if you sense that your opponent is about to start their link climbing plays, just drop the Maxi as I mentioned earlier. This puts them in a tough spot. Either they stop their plays and leave a potentially vulnerable board, or they continue to give you significant card advantage. And finally, we've got Infinite Impermanence, and we all know what this card does. It's used to negate monster effects and can be crucial against Salomon Great. You want to target Gazelle. If you missed the opportunity to Ash Gazelle or didn't have Ash, you can use Impermanence to negate Gazelle's effect when it's summoned. You can also utilize it on Sunlight Wolf. If your opponent Link summons into a Sunlight Wolf and is about to retrieve a Salomon Great spell trap from their graveyard, you can use Impermanence. This stops them from gaining further advantage. And your third option would be Mirage Stelio. If you think your opponent is going to detach a material to special summon from the deck, using Impermanence here can stop their play in its tracks. Now that we've covered the overview, the key cards, the win strategy, the weaknesses and choke points, and when to utilize Ash, Maxi, and Infinite Impermanence, we are going to jump into the direct counters. We have a list here that have been tried and true, and we believe that these direct counters are the most optimal choices for you when you play against Salomon Greats or meta in general. The first card in our list is in no specific order and will be up to you as ranking the cards is subjective. We will put it in a ranking system at the end, but it will be based per our experience and our opinion. The first card on our list is Dimension Shifter. You already know what that does. You can send this card from the hand to the graveyard until the next turn any cards into the graveyard is banished. The impact this card has on Salomon Great is Salomon Greats heavily rely on their graveyard for plays. Cards like Gazelle, Spinny, Jack Jaguar need to interact with the graveyard to function optimally. By turning all cards that would go to the graveyard into banished cards, you effectively cut off the entire and significant portion of the Salem and Great strategy, making it hard for them to execute their main combos. Number two, similar to Infinite Impermanence, except with a little bit more restriction, we've got Effect Veiler and Ghost Mourner. During your opponent's main phase, or when they special summon a monster face up, you can discard this card, target one of those face up monsters and negate its effects until the end of the turn. As an additional, you get a burn effect off of Ghost Mourner. If they were to make that monster leave that's on the field this turn, its controller will take damage equal to its original attack. So do you want to use these cards against Gazelle, Mirage Delio, Sunlight Wolf, Baylinx? Really any card that you feel can provide some form of a stalemate for your opponent to hopefully pass their turn. The next card we've got is Nibiru. You already know what Nibiru does and this being a combo deck they usually do summon up to 5 or sometimes even more than 5 depending on the variant of Salomon Great that you are dueling against. Salomon Greats often summon multiple monsters in one turn to set up their link ladders 
dropping that Nibiru will decimate the deck. I'm not kidding, this is their biggest Achilles heel. For the next card, sometimes the Salmon Great players won't set up a lot of monsters on their board, and sometimes they end up on two Link monsters or a deconstructed board where they have a Mirage Delio and a Baylinx or something of the sorts of that nature. But being that the Salmon Great deck consists of multiple Fire Cybers monsters, cards like Super Polymerization can fuse these monsters into a fusion monster from their extra deck like Garura, which is definitely a plus and really just decimates the Salmon Great board. And finally, the last card on our direct counters list is a card that I am a very big fan of, and I'm going to be speaking on this card a lot more, and that is Spellbound. All face-up monsters your opponent currently controls cannot be tributed or used as material for Fusion, Synchro, XYZ, or Link until the end of this turn. You're literally covering your entire extra deck bases. Solomon Great Strategy revolves around Link Summoning by using their monsters as materials. Spellbound completely shuts down the strategy for an entire turn, crippling their plays and potentially leaving them with a very mediocre board. Well, that is it for the direct counters. To put them in a ranking order, honestly, in a perfect world, I would put Spellbound as number one, Nibiru as number two, Dimension Shifter as number three, Ghost Mourner and Effect Veiler as four and five, and finally, as number six, we would have Super Polymerization. Again, please keep in mind that even though these cards may have worked great for us and in our experience and in our testing, they may not have the same impact for you because it all depends on one playstyle and two chemistry with the current strategy that you plan on running. So make sure that you test these cards before you fully commit. Moving on to board breakers. Again, in no specific orders, we will cover board breakers. We already did some of the board breakers earlier with Nibiru, but we've got some more here that can be very beneficial. To begin the board breaker list, we've got evenly matched. Salomon Great invests resources to set up both a monster board and back row protections. Evenly matched can strip them of this entirely, forcing a choice between keeping a crucial monster or a pivotal back row card. If used after clearing their monsters in battle, it can be even more devastating, leaving them with almost no resources on board. We've got different dimension ground, similar to dimensional shifter. This card's single turn effect can be devastating when timed right. If a Salmon Great player was gearing up for a significant play, sending their monsters to the banish zone instead of the graveyard not only disrupts their immediate play, but also removes those resources for the remainder of the game. Without access to their graveyard, they lose that fuel that powers many of their plays. And the last card on our list is Santa Claus and Kaijus. Kaijus and Santa Claus will literally shut off a lot of their back row, and it's the greatest way to get over pesky monsters like Axis Code Talker. And finally, to end this counter guide, we've got our Floodgates. To begin the Floodgate list, we've got Summon Limits. Neither player can summon more than two times per turn. Salmon Greats rely heavily on Link Summoning, often requiring multiple summons in one single turn to set up their board. Summon Limit will restrict that and literally just slow them down. Maybe it will cause them for a GG if they have no back row removal. Necro Valley. This card disrupts the graveyard reliant mechanics of the Salmon Great deck with Gazelle, Spinny, Jack Jaguar all requiring graveyard interactions. Necro Valley can shut down many of the deck's core plays. Similar to Necro Valley, we've got Abyss Dweller. It's an anti-graveyard card. Activating its effects is going to severely hinder the Salmon Greats from triggering their graveyard-based effects and their graveyard-based interactions, which are integral to its strategy. And finally, the last card on our list is there can be only one. Since Salmon Greats are all Cybers type monsters, that this floodgate forces the player to control only one Cybers monster at a time, dramatically limiting their link summoning capabilities. And there you have it, Duelists, a comprehensive guide to countering the Blazing Salomon Greats. Remember, every deck has its strengths and weaknesses. It's all about exploiting those gaps. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to DrawFace for more in-depth analysis and guides. Keep your decks ready and your strategies sharper. This is Low Tier Hero signing off. Until next time, duel on, my friends.